Why is it that citizens in the richest country on earth are charged so much money for not dying that many go broke and even end up living on the streets? Let's take a look at the history and the travesty of American healthcare and the reasons it costs so much. In a 2017 article for Stanford Medicine, the editor-in-chief of Kaiser Health News, Elizabeth Rosenthal, MD, writes, The very idea of health insurance is in some ways the original sin that catalyzed the evolution of today's medical industrial complex. Perhaps the earliest version of that system dates back to the 1890s, when lumber companies in Tacoma, Washington paid a pair of doctors 50 cents monthly to treat employees. In the early 1900s, the Baptist Church at Baylor University Medical Center in Texas inadvertently invented modern health insurance. It began with a 14-room mansion, dubbed the Texas Baptist Memorial Sanitarium. When attorney and Baylor Vice President Justin Ford Kimball discovered the sanitarium had racked up unpaid bills, he struck a deal with teachers who would pay 50 cents a month plus a deductible for the right to a 21-day stay. Baylor's system caught on like a cold, and World War II helped cement the ill-fated system. Employee numbers dwindled during the war, so companies offered health insurance to lure new hires. The federal government further incentivized the practice by making employer expenditures for health employee health care tax exempt. This arrangement wasn't meant to lower overall medical costs, but to blunt the impact of catastrophic events. In the 1950s and 60s, the popularity of health insurance skyrocketed and profit-hungry companies sprang up to capitalize on demand. As recounted in the Stanford Medicine article, Insurance Policy, How an Industry Shifted from Protecting Patients to Seeking Profit, in the 1950s, for-profit insurance providers like Aetna and Cigna started charging different rates based on age and trying to attract younger, healthier customers. Such companies also forged closer connections to the business world. This created a conundrum for competitors Blue Cross and Blue Shield, which had committed themselves to, quote, providing high-quality, affordable health care for all. Left to care for the sickest patients, the financially ailing Blue Cross and Blue Shield switched to for-profit status in 1994 effectively killing off what Rosenthal calls, quote, old-fashioned, noble-minded health insurance. In that same year, an informal survey by the Senate Judiciary Committee discovered that half of the largest U.S. insurers treated people who had suffered from domestic violence as having pre-existing conditions, affecting their cost and ability to get insurance at all. Subsequent surveys by insurance commissioners in Kansas and Pennsylvania indicated that a quarter of insurance companies looked at domestic violence when weighing whether to renew insurance policies. Companies even penalized women for having children. According to PolitiFact, in 2009, 39 states permitted insurers to deny coverage for, quote, virtually any reason. Pregnancy, quote, almost always counted as a potentially disqualifying pre-existing condition. Hi. All right. Give me a fast trip. I need the hydration. The 2010 Affordable Care Act, commonly referred to as Obamacare, aimed to make health coverage more comprehensive, cheaper for people who already had insurance, and accessible to citizens who were previously barred by pre-existing conditions. However, the results have been mixed. While the ACA's Medicaid expansion provided vital help to people without coverage, people insured through their employers have been increasingly crushed by soaring deductibles. In 2015, physician Praveen Arla told USA Today that the state of healthcare, quote, flip-flopped from what it was before the ACA. According to Arla, patients with employer-based insurance would often lament, my deductible is so high, I'm trying to come to the doctor as little as possible. Meanwhile, employers have increasingly gravitated towards high deductible insurance plans as a cost-cutting measure. Citing the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CBS reported in 2019 that four in 10 Americans have high deductible plans. Assuming patients don't eschew healthcare altogether, the basic alternative would entail paying a lower deductible with a prohibitively high monthly premium. Either way, the fees for procedures and medications can be outrageous. One in every three Americans goes without health care coverage at some point. Much to the dismay of many patients, hospitals have a long-standing tradition of adding massive, unexpected fees to medical bills. In 2013, author, attorney, and Court TV founder Stephen Brill painted a bleak picture of the predicament. Writing for Time, Brill describes how hospitals rely on an internal system called the Charge Master to assign prices for procedures, drugs, medical equipment, and miscellaneous items. Some charges might seem arbitrary, with hospitals billing patients for lampshades and IV tubing. Adding insult to literal injury, those fees are severely inflated. Brill observed that a blood test that cost $13.94 through Medicare was assigned price tags of $199.50 and $239 respectively to two separate patients. 
According to the RAND Corporation report from 2019, the world collectively spends around $1 trillion on drugs annually. The United States accounts for about half of that total despite making up only 5% of the global population. 3% of America's entire GDP comes from drug costs. But while the prices patients pay far outpace the rest of the world, the results lag behind other developed nations. The Harvard Gazette says that in 2016, the U.S. spent twice as much on healthcare as other high-income countries, but ranked dead last in life expectancy on a list of 10 other countries. Why does America pay so much for less? The Rand Corporation observes that every other country in the world regulates drug prices, typically through some formal process of negotiation only we don't. Instead, pharmaceutical companies call the shots. The FDA effectively allows them to monopolize drugs via patents. And because greed is bottomless, drug companies boost their bottom lines by exploiting legal loopholes. As USA Today details, drug patents generally last 20 years. Once you subtract the time it takes for approval, pharmaceutical manufacturers can, quote, expect anywhere from 7 to 12 years of protection. However, they can extend that time through the dubious practices of evergreening and thickening. Thickening entails inundating the courts and patent trade office with applications in order to overwhelm the system. Evergreening involves adding small changes to a drug, even doing nothing more than adding a stripe to a pill. Forbes policy editor Avik Roy explains that drive-by doctoring occurs when a doctor outside your insurance network treats you without your knowledge, which can result in extraordinary out-of-pocket fees. Roy writes that drive-by doctoring, quote, is especially egregious in emergency rooms due to the free reign afforded to physicians and the often disoriented or outright incapacitated state of patients. No wonder the healthcare system is such a mess. Check out our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.